All right, what's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of the vlog. My name is Keen. I buy, sell, and trade sports cards for a living. Be sure to give me a follow here on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button below. Give me a follow on Instagram as well. I'm always buying. Without further ado, let's get into today's video. All right, here at the post office, guys, getting ready to ship this whole IKEA bag of packages out. If you know me, you know I swear by the IKEA bags. Let's go. And that's it, guys. Empty IKEA bag. Easy as that. All right, guys, another day, another vlog, and we're meeting back here at the same spot where we met Phil at because we're doing another deal with Phil. We're doing a both parking lot deal, and uh, he should be here in about 15 minutes. I'm just here chilling, man, but we should get something pretty nice. I'll show you the lot that we picked up. I don't know what it is here in the Bay Area, but these mosquitoes, I have not noticed them be this big or be such so plentiful. Don't come after me, Peter. That's for the good of mankind. They say mosquitoes kill the most people in the world because of malaria, so doing my part. I got a shout out to my guy Phil. Another brick of slabs coming home. We can take a look at it when we get home. All right guys, back at the crib. Let's see the haul that we picked up. Uh, and also we have a nice little mail day surprise that I picked up from the mailbox. Um, some good slabs that came in today. All right, so first things first, pick this up. Uh, this came in the mail. Nice Mickey Mantle uh, PSA 3 from 1968. Uh, it's always so crazy with sports cars, right? People either want the really new stuff or the really old stuff. Uh, Mickey Mansell is always gonna have a market. Always pick them up when I can. Let's see what this brick is looking like here. Let's see, we got a Steph Curry red disco prism. That means it's number 249. We got a Tim Duncan. Die cut Air Marshals, Tom Brady. One of the bigger cars from the lot, I think. Trevor Lawrence Blue Scope, PSA 10. This is a guy that everybody's looking for right now. Trey Lance, PSA 10, orange. Uh, die cut Tua, PSA 10. Sneaky card right here. This is a Tyrese Maxi, numbered five out of 20. Crystal green die cut, Crown Royal. Anthony Simons, PSA 10. We got a nice gold wave, uh, Anthony Edwards, National Pride. And then we got a Carmelo Anthony, this man just retired, PSA 10. Jason Tatum, rookie, uh, PSA 10, number two, 199. Very nice. We got a Jordan Poole, Ruby Wave. We got a, a Josh Allen rookie, PSA 10 Elite, and this one is numbered to 399. Very nice pickup. We got a gold mosaic, Kevin Durant, numbered five out of 10. Beautiful, beautiful. Silver Kobe Bryant, you know I love picking up the Kobe, especially when it's a PSA 10. And then a Steph Curry, PSA 10, rookies and stars. All right guys, so uh, picked up that lot. Besides the mantle, I picked up that lot for my guy, Phil, and he messaged me. He actually said that uh, somebody had backed out on, on the deal, so uh, he came to me with it and told him my number. He told me his number, and we got there. And uh, that's another thing that I kind of try to pride myself on is I'm going to be that guy that's always going to be there to buy. And if you're going to be that guy, you can't be the half of the time guy. You can't be the some of the time guy. You got to be the all the time guy uh, when it's time to buy. So, so yeah, uh, super easy on that deal. And another one. Again, always buy and be sure to hit me up. Not gonna be able to pay full market. I don't think anyone in this economy is gonna be paying full market for these things. So uh, if I'm your guy and you're my guy, let's be guys, let's buy some cards, let's sell some cards, let's do some deals. Shake the hand. Shake the hand. Yo. Hey, are you at the uh, shop right now? No, I'm not, what's up? Uh, no, I'm trying to see if it's worth uh, making the trip up there this Friday, Saturday to do a deal or if, it, if I should just wait until next, until Fairfield. I'm gonna get a lot of cards back, like some bigger baseball cards, uh, some bigger baseball, uh, basketball. I have a couple of like, I don't, I don't know exactly what you're looking for, but I have like a couple of Kabooms left, a Zion Auto, like some smaller cards like a LeBron Stainer. Uh, I haven't really been buying too much basketball. I've been trying to go heavy on football. Okay. Well, maybe I'll take all the basketball that you got then. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you want to come by, if you want, we could we could go to both shops. Both shops? Okay. Um, yeah. are, are you, like, pretty, like, as far as basketball or cars in general, are you pretty, like, uh, heavy on, like, the 50 to 150 range? Uh, not, bro. 
but to be honest, we've been selling so much of that shit in store. Yeah. I don't even know what I have anymore. Okay. So you're like, what, yeah. like, uh, I guess just send me some pics when you can, because I'm trying to like, uh, I guess I'm trying to book a hotel tonight if I'm going to go up there. But if not, I'm like 50-50, like whether it's worth the trip or because I know I'm going to see you next weekend anyways. You know what I mean? So, yeah, um, I mean, I'll probably have more by the show, by the show. The only thing yeah. is I, I have that that NBA stream on Wednesday. Oh, that's right. So if it's worth it to go up there, then you need to do it a week early. I'll be in both stores tomorrow. You want to come up tomorrow or you want to come up Saturday? I was thinking about uh, driving up, staying there Friday night, hitting the casino, and then coming back uh, Saturday afternoon. I'll let you know tomorrow. I'll be bouncing around both stores, and I'll take some pictures, and I'll just start putting stuff aside for you. Yeah, just send some pics, um, and, I'll, and then I'll, if, it's, right. if it's all good, I'll book the hotel tomorrow night and head over there. All right, later. All right, peace. So that's what kind of like the day is. Um, I don't know what this weekend's shaping up. Never know what's gonna happen in this in this in this life in general. But never know what's gonna happen in these in these days. Like where I got to be, where the deal calls, where I need to meet up with someone. So yeah, trying to see if we're gonna go up to Sacramento this weekend. All right, guys, we're back here at the home office slash drum set. Uh, I want to show you some stuff that came in. Uh, this is a Trey Young number to forty nine. I put this as a steal on Instagram for six. 25 I believe when it's comping around 770 nobody taking it yet, but nice number to 49 Trey Young Also picked up this, uh, you know, you gotta love the kabooms every time you see a kaboom It just catches the eye catches the attention. Here's a Darren Waller kaboom uh, Quick throw in Carlos Jorge number to 50 picked up a Joe Burrow optic hollow PSA 9 Here's a blue wave uh, Lamar Jackson that just came in and you know those cars that have two people on them Here's Kobe and here's LBJ, beautiful card. Tops, PSA 9. And a number 225, Brandon Ayuk. Easy to move 49er stuff here in the Bay Area, that's for sure. And that's the SSP right there. We also picked up, uh, been picking up a lot of, um, a lot of uh, wax just to rip on the chat. We got some fast break prisms. We pulled a nice number to 20 LeBron last night. Uh, Recon, this has been a super fun rip. Uh, very affordable, you get some really nice things. We pulled a number to 10 Curry, and then we pulled a number to 10 Keegan Murray auto. So really fun stuff. If you had, if you uh, were in on the card fun stuff when it dropped a couple weeks back, or maybe like a month back, um, this is the new Pixar version that just came out. And that's just it, man. Been buying up a lot of stuff. You know, I've been trying to find stuff to buy, so um, you know, we've been picking up wax. It's been kind of hard to find uh, uh, slabs and singles at a good deal, so we've been picking up a lot of wax. I need to have the money working for me and, and constantly invested in, 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 in recycling inventory. So picking up wax when the slabs are not available, picking up the slabs when the wax is not available. Uh, that's just that's just a, a day in the life. Again, real quick, let's talk about it. Someone did try to scam me out of $1,000. Two people tried to scam me out of $1,000. Somebody reached out to me to sell me three separate cards. Uh, we had done one deal previously in the past. Everything went smooth. This time he messaged me to sell three cards. We did a little back and forth. Uh, ended up being about $900. And then we landed on that number and I said, sure, here's the funds, sent it. For me, usually when I sell send cards, the tracking is available immediately. Like you. Ask the people who bought cards for me um, over Instagram. I'll have them tracking and I'll show them a picture of the package within like 15 minutes. Uh, I don't expect that from most people, but I usually give people 24 hours, sometimes 48 hours to provide tracking. After three days, this guy did not get send me the tracking. I message him, no reply. I message him again, no reply. Now it's been four days. I look at his profile and I see that that looks different. It looks like he blocked me. So I messaged my friends, hey, can you guys look at this Instagram profile? Let me know if you if this person blocked me or if this person, you know, is just not available anymore, his account disappeared or something. They showed me, said, yep, sure enough, he blocked me. Now, fortunately, I always pay PayPal goods and services over Instagram. I'm protected through PayPal and I'm protected through my bank. So I'm going to get the money back. I want to give this guy the benefit of the doubt and say, hey, maybe he was hacked. It's it's fully feasible that somebody hacked his account, but th this person did have me send the money to the same PayPal account uh, that we had done a deal on before. So if he was hacked, then this person's PayPal, his email, and his Instagram was hacked. So I don't know the likelihood of that. You know, when the case closes, I'll put his information up and the PayPal information up on Instagram just to make sure that everybody does their due diligence. But 
That's why it's important to be sure you always vet people. You know, don't send money unprotected. Don't send money sight unseen. Make sure you are protected through your bank, through PayPal or whatever. So that's why I always uh, pay goods and services online uh, just for that reason alone. And look, it, this was bound to happen. When you deal with, when you do deals online at the volume and at the scale at which I do, and I'm still looking to scale it up, this is gonna happen. So I'm fully aware that, you know, I'm fortunate that after one year, I've only had one case. I'm fully aware that within the next year, I'll probably, if I'm looking to scale up at the rate that I'm looking to scale, that I'll probably have one or two of these constantly in rotation of people looking to scam me or looking to try to run a deal, which is, and looking back on it, it's kind of crazy that the that if this guy is trying to scam me, I'm going to get my money back. You're not going to get to keep the money. And I'm, I have a social media following, so I'm going to post your PayPal information. So kids, like, here's my thing, man, like, I love how the term with the young generation is tossed around so so quickly as if like, if if a buyer buys a card for anything less than market value, oh, he's a scammer, Keen's a scammer, that person's a scammer, but they just throw that word around so arbitrarily. It's like, this, that is not scamming. This is scamming. This person literally sent me pictures of cards and just blocked me and then disappeared off, off the internet. For whatever reason, I don't know what goes through people's minds. Like they're not gonna get to keep the money. I'm going to get that money back. They're going to be out of that money. So that is really scamming. Don't throw the word around scamming so arbitrarily because all that stuff about you know paying 80% of comps, 70% of comps, that's not scamming. I'm sending the money. This is really scamming. I, I tell this story all the time. Like I've, I've been a victim of scams before. It happens all the time in the hobby. And I will go down, if my, if my days ended tomorrow, whether they end tomorrow or whether they end 100 years from now, I tell my family, look, I'm gonna go down in my life never having ran a scam on anybody. I've always been about my business. I'm never, I'm gonna go out never running a scam on anybody. Yeah, there might be miscommunications, but my, my you know, but I always try to make things right, but my intent will never be malicious. And I can honestly say that. I will go down never having ran a scam on anybody. That's my message to the kids out there. I always like to give a some teachable moment. Like if if you're if you're young in this hobby, man, always do the right thing. Doing the right thing is always the right thing. Running a scam, stealing at a show, stealing other people's money is never in my mind, I don't know, maybe in my mind is never cool. Like if this whole money game and this whole life game is a game, I wanna play and win by the rules. You understand what I'm saying? The rules that everybody has to abide by, I wanna win that way. So always do the right thing. Don't run scams. I mean like, I don't need that karma on me. I would advise you not to put that karma on you. And actually I did say that this is a $1,000 uh, uh, scam. So that's $900 right there. I sold somebody a $100 Pokemon card a month back on eBay. They said that it never arrived or they never received it even though the tracking showed it's delivered. I uploaded the tracking and I said, hey look eBay, it does show it's delivered. Please have them check with their postal carrier or whoever because it's there's only so much I can do, right? All I can do is get the card in the package and, and put it in the mailbox. And from there, like, you know, if I could deliver it to you, you know, at the speed of Santa Claus, I would, you know what I mean? Um, and do it all by hand, I would, but I can't. And then, uh, you know, they closed the case in my favor, of course, because tracking shows that I've done everything within my power. And then two weeks later, the buyer opens up a case and saying, oh, actually, you did ship the package, but it was empty. But that's actually, in my mind, 99% of the time, it's just a ploy for them to try to get their money back because the story just doesn't add up. Like, okay, so you received the empty, empty package with a tracking slip and you're just assuming that it was mine, but you have no photo proof of the package. Like, it doesn't make sense because if I receive an empty package, I'm immediately contacting the post office or I'm immediately contacting eBay or I'm immediately contacting the seller. You don't just go two weeks later, throw a package, and go, oh yeah, actually it was empty. So it's not adding up, but I'm gonna get that money back as well. But again, just so I'm, I'm kind of going on here, but I just wanna kind of give a, a lot of like points to this story. You know, A, don't run a scam and then B, like this is the cost of doing business, right? I like this hobby, I love this hobby, it is still a hobby to me, but at the end of the day, I'm an LLC, I pay my bookkeepers at the end of the month, I pay my taxes, this is a business. So, with that being said, I've seen comments before of people like, why would you sell the dealers? Why would you sell, why would you sell it yourself? Because if you sell yourself and you do it at any type of scale, you're gonna run into these situations where people are gonna try to scam you, where, uh, Packages are gonna get lost in the mail, where packages are gonna get damaged in transit. All the pros, of course, is that you can buy a card and you can sell a card for more money, but this stuff that comes with that, of running a business, like there's people out there that can't understand why they would ever sell a card for anything less than what they could get on eBay. First of all, if a card is comping at $100 and they say sell it on eBay, 
All right, right off the rip, eBay's taking at least 13%. So that $100 you're getting is $87. Now, you're gonna run into those these situations one every 500 times, one every 200 times, where this person is gonna say they never got the package even though you shipped it out. Or this person is gonna say that, uh, you know, take your money and never ship out the card. These are the things that we have to deal with when we're running a business. So if you want to sell to dealers, sell wholesale, sell big lots to me, or you wanna sell it by yourself, by all means, go for it, do it, but this is the type of stuff that you're gonna run into. But if you wanna just sell it in one go to somebody reputable, to somebody who has a history, who has vouchers, and you can just take the money, be done with it, not have to worry about the scams, the shrinkage, the stolen packages, the lost packages, the chargebacks, anything like that, I'm the one that can do that for you. Dealers are the ones that can do that for you, but that comes with a price because we have to deal with those things now, right? You know what I'm saying? If you wanna sell it yourself and you wanna get into business for yourself, by all means, do it. Time of my life the past year. But understand that there is the downsides and the shrinkage that comes with it. And that's the type of things that me and the other dealers take on. So just another day in the life, man. Can't let it get me down. People trying to get my money, but I'm always on my P's and Q's. You'll never catch me sleeping. I shouldn't say you'll never. I'm always on my P's and Q's. And I'll try my best to never got caught, get caught sleeping, never go get caught slipping. But, you know, things happen sometimes. Anyways, that's it, man. Day in the life quick rundown. That's what's going on. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you on the next episode. Peace.